Let me take a stab going along. Come on. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Future Training with Mike. Thank you for joining and um, watching the video. Um, first, I'd like to start off like I always do by thanking those who have already subscribed to the channel. That means you've already hit that red button and uh, sub to the channel. And I appreciate the likes you guys been dropping on the videos as well. Please continue to do so if it's your first time watching uh, one of the videos. Please take the time to go ahead and hit that sub button, guys. The content here is free. Uh, this is my uh, recorded live session of uh, me trading the E Mini S and B 500 futures, guys. The ES. So um, let's go ahead and um, take a look here to see what's going on in the markets today. Um, if you guys, you guys have been uh, asking about the volume profile settings that I use, the volume profile as you see loaded to my charts here on the um, various charts that I use, the 12 range, 4 range, and even the 1 hour chart. I posted a video yesterday called volume profile settings. Um, I mentioned that in that video that the two of the indicators I use is from my company called Disco Trading, and you can find that indicator at discotrading.com. Not sponsored by them, but just received a lot of uh, comments about uh, surrounding that particular um, topic there so and in that video I just talk about uh, the different settings that I use whatever the case is but I'm sure there may be other ones out there but anyway let's move forward and get into today's video here as I mentioned this is my live recorded session to be trading the mini SP 500 futures first time watching thanks for watching and hope you found some value in the information that I covered today I pretty much this is just a uh, my recorded session of my video not excuse me, my videos but my trades that I take on a daily basis, um, I have 150 plus uh, videos on the channel covering a variety of different content, but primarily centered around and focused around the uh, strategy that I particularly use, that I like to use, that has um, allowed me to become a profitable trader and uh, make profits every single day and trade this one particular market, okay, um, which is the uh, ES Futures, okay. Um, you can use the same strategy, it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, on any futures market, options you know even stocks but anyways let's go ahead and carry forward and we're going to start off by looking at the, the uh, one hour chart here uh, like i like to do every single day just to kind of give me an idea of the direction of what's going on in the market um time wise we are currently at 9 55 right now um i always like to start off by just waiting a few moments 20 sometimes even 30 minutes after the market's open this is uh, eastern time okay so uh we see the market dipping right now um Yesterday, the market kind of it just it rained sideways. That's all it did. You can see it here. It was a range day. Uh, Still, there was opportunity to trade uh, a few trades and was able to do okay. Um, I mentioned this area up here where it's blocked off here with this rectangle that supply price, you know, it was a few points away. Um, pushing up in within this swing here to the downside. So it would trace back. Um, <laughs> it hasn't quite hit that area yet. I think we're off by like two, two and a half points, but it's it's bounced, and uh, since then we have been pushing to the downside. So um, this looks like it was maybe a retracement in price has rejected the area uh, in here uh, within the swing here and is bouncing to the downside. So I, I, as I always say, price likes to move from um, you know high volume area to to through a low volume area back down to a high volume area so maybe we're coming down here to test something some area down here at the bottom here um as it stands right now um right now until until we get to an area excuse me of demand i probably am going to be looking more so maybe short opportunities could be um because we did you know we, we would trace back here to an area of resistance um, and balancing. So this is where I look over my 12 range chart, look for some structure breaks or, or a break of area of the structure and um, to the downside and it's wait for the pullback, okay? So now I'm kind of focused on and looking at areas to possibly go short. I'm not saying you can't go long, but right now I'm focused on um, short opportunities uh, until price can kind of get back maybe down to this high volume area right here and play off the area of volume but particularly in playoff area of demand, okay? Demand, what is demand? People ask that question. It's just an area where there's, um, you know, a significant amount of, of, of buying uh, coming out of that area. Uh, like right here, where price pushed down on the way down here, that was a swing to the downside, lots of selling came out of this area here. Same thing right here, um, a lot of buying came out of this area right here. So 
as prices pushing back up to the upside. Buying buyers started stepping in, even on the market started moving sideways here. This is on a one hour chart, but price started moving sideways. Buyers accumulated and pushed the market higher. So right now, uh, price is bumping to an area where sellers took control of the market. Market's pushing back, you know, lower, and we'll see what happens. So right now, let's take a look at the 12 range chart. Okay, 12 range chart is my chart that I use to. Um, uh, mark my levels in my zones, okay? So let's take a look and see what's going on with the 12 range chart. Okay. So I have we broke some of the, so this is price where price bounced at right here, okay? Reject it, and it starts to break structure to the downside, okay? So when I say break structure, it means breaking market structure, okay? Market structure is where price is pushing up, pulling back. Pushing higher, pulling back, pushing higher. Now it's moving to the downside, making this breaking structure, breaking this low, pushing down, pulling back, and then you know making lower highs and lower lows, stepping down to the downside. Now there was a low here, okay, and there was a low here, okay. So prices broke through this low here. So now what I'll be interested in seeing on the 12 range chart is if let's take a look if we can get a um, maybe possibly a pullback. I'll show you an area of supply that you can focus on. Okay, this this recorder, this video. Uh, uh, what's going on here? Keeps doing this. Maybe I need to bring it down some more. Nope, it's been doing the same thing lately. Uh, I hate to do this, guys. I'm gonna bring the video recorder down. There, there it goes. For some reason, it been acting funny like that. Um, so I'm going to draw off an area here. Let's see here what we're looking at. Uh, let's see, pushed up. Okay. Broke to the downside. Um, yeah, I'm looking, guys. Bear with me here. This right here would be an area of um, resistance right here. So. Uh, more so, the area to me would be in this area right here. Okay, price pulls back within this area here. Be careful because if price pulls back right here, okay, this is resistance. And what price could do at that point is it could pull back, do something like this, and then retrace back, push lower, and then push higher to test this area. And then people get stopped out on moves like this. Okay, so just be careful. So we're waiting for areas to see a price to pull back to now, maybe to an area supply. Okay. Okay. So as it stands right now, let's show you the one hour again. Let's take a look at that. Um, price has a has a possible has a, a chance of pulling, coming back down to this area here, to this high volume area. So I'm going to be looking for a. Uh, a pullback. Now, if we take a play off a one hour chart here, guys, let's take a look here. Let me see something. 4458. Uh, come on. Oh, guys, I'm not acting funny. What did I say? 4458. Oh, that's way back here. Okay. So, some people who trade off higher, higher time frames, say, for instance, like swing traders or position traders. You know, there's opportunity here as well, even with a one hour chart. But I'm not a, a position trader, I'm a scalper. They would look for maybe an opportunity like right here in this area right here. Um, they would be looking for an opportunity to play off of supply right here. When price got back to 58. Now, there is an area there. I'm not going, I'm not going to say there's not because there is. Price pushed up here, pulled back, pushed higher, okay, broke lower, breaking the low here. So it pulls back. This would be the area of supply to focus around around 58 between 60 and 58. You know, trade from the higher end of the um, the upper portion of the volume area there. Okay, but yeah, yesterday was it was just a side winding day, just price moving back and forth in a range. Okay, so and right now so this morning we've got quite a bit of a landslide here. Price pulls back to this area here, pretty much. I'm you know I'm just trying to tap into supply. And it just slides, you know, it moves straight to the downside. Okay, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. What kind of action we get out of the market today? Um, 
I got a question somebody had asked me if in the past if I um you know if I ever trade in NASDAQ, you know, meaning the the uh NQ. That NQ is the NASDAQ, that's the uh, emitting derivative of the um, the NASDAQ, but it is the uh emitting NASDAQ. Uh, I've looked at it in the past when I first started. Um and you know, I particularly don't the reason why I trade the ES because most of the equity markets um they or the indices they follow suit to the s p 500 so i just feel like why not drive the right way and trade the market that pretty much is the heavy hitter for the indices uh that pretty much you know like the the, the, the russell or the dow or the nags that they follow suit you know in line with the the s p 500 so whatever the s p is doing they're going to do pretty much you know sometimes they may be off a little bit of whatever the case is and they move in the opposite direction but they kind of correct themselves and then fall suit with the uh, S and P five hundred. So um, that's the reason why I like to trade the uh, the um, S and P as well as the, the tick value as well. You know, the Nasdaq is a it's a very volatile market, and which means that it's it's high paced. It moves real quick, and unless you really are a good trader, you know you will um, you can get stopped out pretty quick. Um, so you have to be very fast. And very accurate about trading that particular market and know your entry and exit points real uh, real quick. Um, but other than that, you know, the, the Nasdaq tick value is only five dollars a tick versus, and it's just like that the margin too. So like, depending on your broker, like uh, the margin could be like a thousand dollars per contract in the Nasdaq, but with the ES, it's like four or five hundred dollars a contract. So there's just some there's some pluses, some pluses, and some some pros to trading the uh, the S and P to me to me now over trading the Nasdaq. So. Um, Yes, at first when I first started in, uh, trading years back, um, I looked at the markets. I started off uh, definitely heavy hitting on the Nasdaq because of the tick value then, and you know, capital wise had a lot. Of capital had a lot to do with it back then, but now it's like it just makes sense trade twelve dollars fifty cent a tick versus five dollars a tick, so you make more per tick off the ES. Even though the ES is a slow moving market, but when it moves, it moves. You can you know make several points or set up to make several trades. So. Uh, a lot of people ask them, well, why you trade the, the you know, the S&P 500 and scalp for uh, a few points, whatever the case is, a point here, two or three points there, whatever the case is. Some moves are better than others. But the thing about it is, is that depending on your broker, commissions aren't much. Now, if you go take a NASDAQ trade, you're going to have to make a lot more in profit to cover, say, um, well, commissions aren't going to be that much if, you, if you're making money in the, in the NASDAQ. But my thing is, it's like if you got commissions almost five dollars uh round turn for every um contract that you enter the market with well you just better hope that you can you know and, and the tick bag is only five dollars a tick you just better hope that you can you know cover that commission cost uh when you're trading on that on the nasdaq and you definitely do so with the es you know it's come up, come up better to me all right so let's take a look and see what's going on here all right um so the market opened up around this area right here and it's only done just a little bit of movement right here a little push to the downside forming this swing to the downside um i mentioned that i'm would be interested in shorts but you know i could trade either direction um let's see yeah let's see Okay, it was a little long right here at 44.30 uh, when price pushed up here and pulled back, but didn't take it. Uh, a little long for, you know, just maybe a point or two, maybe a point. But the market's ranging right now. It's just moving sideways at this current moment. So uh, just going to stand down until I can wait to, you know, get into a better opportunity to take a trade. Uh, I mentioned this to you guys before. Trading is all about being um, being patient. Being patient. Being very patient. That's the key to it. Okay. Uh, let's mark this area right here. I'm not sure what price is going to do. Let's wait and see. <laughs> the price is not making any newer highs. Um, 
Let's see, pushed up here, broke the back. Pushed up, breaking the high right here. So it's just ranging right now. So I want to see it take out, break the high here, and break above 44, 38 as well. Okay, so we're hitting off this little red line here that I have. Let me take a stab going along. Come on. There we go. Quick little long. Tell you a little bounce off this area right here. All right. This is pulling back to the area of demand right here off of this uh, play to the downside here with price. Push down, pull back, push lower. Okay. It turns back around, breaks back above this area right here on the push up, pull back and push higher. So this is the area of demand right here. I show it to you. And that's what I'm playing off of right below the high volume area as well. Uh, right here. Okay. All right, hope you guys can see that. Price pulls back, hits the area of demand, lower portion of the high volume area, go long. So I just scalped that real quick, okay. That's all that was, quick little scalp. Got to start off on making something this morning, so. You got to be quick with your entries. Watch this thing doing this. Today's this, okay, that was just little, eight little ticks right there. Hey, I'm not complaining. Um. But I mentioned this area up here is an area of supply. Okay. Now, typically, let's see. Uh, this area right here, let me move this right here. Okay. This would be the area of supply that we focus on price and get back to this area. Why? Price pulls back here, puts us at the upper portion of the high volume area, and it's in the area of supply. So uh, we have influence in that area, confirmation, enough. And if we Look at the VWAP. If you trade and looking at, you know, the VWAP, uh, which is the volume weighted average price um, movement, if price pulls back and rejects this area right here, we'll be sitting below the VWAP. Just some more confirmation. So, um, you know, a lot of people trade SMAs, EMAs, or the VWAP, whatever the case is, looking for price too. If they're looking to go short and want to take an opportunity to go short, they're taking it if, as long as price stays below, like say, for instance, the VWAP here. So, Let's see what price does here. All right. So this area down here is marking an area off the one hour chart, which is an area of demand. Um, there's a possibility today that I believe that price is probably going to push down. Okay. Um, so the reason being, if we look at the one hour chart again, um, we'll blow it up a little bit. Okay. So price projected when it got into the area of resistance right here, it's breaking lower. It's broke this area here. It's low here. So Really, it's going to either play and bounce out of the low volume area right here or push on down to this high volume area, possibly testing, you know, this area of support right here. And hopefully we get a pull back into the area of demand, uh, demand here and then play off that, the lower end of the high volume area. And uh, we get the rejection and price pulls back, um, back up to pretty much resistance in a sense. So we'll see what happens. So basically coming, buying into, um, you know, Buying at the the lower portion of volume and then and then uh, pretty much uh, taking it back to you know the area of resistance. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Price is going to try to push a little lower. Hmm. Okay, yeah, keep push lower. Definitely push lower. I already mentioned the price push lower. See? All right. Let's see what's going to do. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, look at it. Is it going to take this low right here out? Off a little swing and then uh, pull back, basically pull back and look for opportunity to go short. I'm not sure. Let's see. Hmm. 
So, so far, his broker takeout is a little low right here. Let's see what happens. See what happens here. Not too much activity so far this morning. Okay. Uh, price is just moving sideways. We did break, make a little low here. Um, we'd like to see price money pull back to this area right here. Um, we'll see. It's not doing too much. Not doing much at all. So yeah, let me know what you guys trade uh, down in the comment section. You guys trading the? Are you are you trading? I'll take you guys to trading probably futures. Um, but what particular class uh, of the futures markets are you trading? Are you trading, you know, equities? Are you trading um, grains? Are you trading, you know, some of the currencies or or um, maybe the uh, oil markets? So, let me know. If you trade the NASDAQ, let me know. If you trade the NASDAQ, let me know why you like trading the NASDAQ. I'd like here. Okay. To me, right now, like I said, my direction is more of a, kind of right now at this point is short biased, I'd say, than anything. But just because I'm that's because I'm looking at the higher time frame, the one hour I'm playing off of that, being confident in my trading this morning. So I mean, you know, being being patient in my trading this morning, not confident. I should, I'm gonna say patient. So let's see. All right, so so the uh, market shot it's trying to push higher, but this is. More so, probably just pull back to an area like I said, resistance up here at the top here. So hopefully, we get to we tap into this area of supply off the of twelve range, and um, um, possibly can look for an opportunity there. So we'll see what happens. So we get a little bit of consolidation right here um, at the bottoms here, and um, the price probably bouncing off of an area of yeah. Support okay, so that's why it's bouncing there, but it also consolidating the area, build some volume, could push back up through this high volume area and come up here and test up here at the uh, um, up here, okay. So, right now, let's see what let's let's see what the market is trying to do, okay, okay. Uh, let's see if price is going to break above, close above, like I said, a 38 area. But this could be just a retracement back to the area of resistance up here. Okay. So, price missing some volume right here. Maybe pull back up to this area here. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm. I like to see price come a little lower here. I'm not sure, you know. It's consolidating here, building volume. Um, and I mentioned I like to see it come a little lower, but hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Hmm. We're going to go long, staff, we're long here.
Okay, there we go. A uh, little scalp right here. I'm going to pull back to this area right here. Show it to you. A uh, little risky trade there, but price pulling back to this area right here. Not all the way at the bottom, but right below. Price pulling back to this little area right here. Area support. Uh, went long to basically back into the top of the high volume area to this area right here, okay? So, excuse me. Um, not getting too many opportunities today. The market is very uh, tight today and um, not getting too, too many opportunities, okay? But that's okay because we're, you know, sometimes in days like this where I'm not able to, you know, within the first hour or two to make my, my goal, my profit, whatever you want to say is, I, you know, I don't push it. I just be patient and I wait for the opportunity. I can look at, I look at the market again in the afternoon because, you know, market, market. You know, it stays open just like people who work an eight to five, nine to five job. You know, it stays open till uh, pretty much you know five in the evening. I don't be trading to five. You know, um, um, I'm typically I may look at the market again around two o'clock, and then you know, typically by three, I'm not in the market no more because the market starts doing some strange stuff after the three o'clock. The volatility starts to pick up. I should say. All right, so we're gonna hold tight. I know I took two entries long, guys, but, um, you know, I'm trading small areas, weight, uh, off areas of support, but my, my focus is really to take an opportunity to go short. Just haven't gotten that yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mark, the market is not doing much at all. I mean, we are really just, just consolidating here. Um, I'm not sure if price comes down to this area, what it's going to do, but we are just chopping sideways, making it extremely difficult to do much of anything today, guys. So I'm going to wait a couple more minutes and see if I can't, you know, maybe take at least one more trade before closing out here. And I may look at the market uh, sometime this afternoon. But right now, there will, there will be days like this. Uh, today's Wednesday. Um, most times you see price action like this on, on Fridays. Uh, but the market's not doing much of anything, so I'm just going to kind of um, just wait it out, you know, um, and see what happens here. Uh, here we got consolidation right here, market moving sideways. This was yesterday's price action ranging here before it popped up, and then um, hit up in the area of resistance that I showed you off the one hour, and then it burst to the downside here. So, um, yeah, right now we're just just market is slowly grinding to, to the uh slowly grinding it's slowly consolidating here slowly grinding sideways all right let's see um uh, kind of chopping to the upside here but uh really you know kind of wicking out the tops here um so i'm really let's see if price pull back down to here um been waiting all morning guys i mean two little small trades not much going on kind of getting I irritated because trading is all about being patient, but still, it's like, uh, who wants to sit here and look at this crazy consolidation mess all morning long? You know what I mean? So, just one of those things. Yeah. Uh, let's see, price bouncing here. Going for a stab here. Long. Ah, price bounce. Look at that. Hit my. Oh, 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 I see what it's doing. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Not a good trade. Uh, let's see. Well, hopefully I can feel it here. Come back up. Mm, just going to scout for a few ticks here. Ah, come on. There we go. All right, scalping. I saw I'm, I'm just getting those little scalp opportunities, guys. So slowly grinding and scalping. You know, right now, not getting too big of uh, opportunities. It's okay. All right. Okay. I was hoping to see price come down back, back down to this area here, but um, it's all right. Yeah, see what it's doing now. 
Yep, yep, yep. Quick little scalp. Green candle close right here. So basically, this was just, you know, uh, playoff of support pretty much. Just price pulling back to pushing higher, pulling right back. Here's the little can't the swing to the downside right here. Price breaks back above, taking out this little high here on the pullback, bouncing off that high to support at the, uh, right at the bottom of, of um, the a lower portion of the high volume profile. Um, I'm going to give you the, the volume profile, but can it close green? You can just take it back for uh, can it close green if you got in at right here at 40 at 34, but it's right centered at the volume profile. Um, just a quick little scalp, maybe a point right there. So not much, much. So just scalping, guys. That's the only thing I'm able to, to get out of this today. Uh, but a few ticks here and there, but it's, it's okay. You know, you can get a better move eventually. Um, still hasn't come down here and hit this area here where I want to see it down here at 29, but you know, here's what it is. Yeah, okay, so we still just consolidate, move aside, like building volume right here. It's, you know, it's, it's making these kind of uh higher lows here, but I think it's probably going to come up, possibly more come up here and test this area right here. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of watch it over time throughout the day. Um, not me, me and I'm not going to be sitting by the computer all day long, but anyways, we'll go ahead and close this video out here. Got into, I think three little scalps, whatever the case is. Um, today's not over, you know, look for more opportunities throughout the day. You can see the action from yesterday was just chop, 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 moving sideways, ranging, whatever the case is. Price breaks higher then breaks lower, uh, right below the range here. Uh, so price is pulling back to an area. Um, right now of, of resistance and bouncing off of yesterday, the low of yesterday's range, um, you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this video here, guys. I'll go ahead and get it uploaded. And you guys are probably already watching it, but uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video as well. And I appreciate everyone who's watched, watched the uh, video today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and take the time to hit the little red button there, the subscribe button. And make sure to hit the little uh, bell, bell icon that's the post notification to ensure you never miss one of the uploads of videos that I post to the channel. See you in tomorrow's video, guys, and if you're trading, please be safe in the markets.